Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful that you have chosen to worship with St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, the home church of Rosa Parks. And we welcome those who are joining us virtually. Our sincere desire is the presence of the living God will manifest no matter where you are. We serve a God who is in the blessing business. We serve a God who is still pulling down strongholds. We still serve a God who is breaking up fallow ground. So come on God, have your way in this place because I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, let's have church. Oh, I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me. to worship. 
I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day and night course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house, Lord. I have loved your habitation, the place where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Amen. Amen.
so good. Thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning. Thank you, God, you've been with us all week long. Just grateful for what you're doing in the background for us. Continue to bless all the sick this morning, God. You know their needs. Cover them right where they are, Father God. And lift up all bereaved families this morning all over this land, Lord. Lord, I ask a special blessing for our police officers. Bless them to do their job effectively, but remember to treat each one the same if they wish to be treated. Anoint them with understanding and guidance, God. And we just want to say thank you. Bless our children this morning. Lord, breathe a fresh anointing upon them and cover them when they go to school, when they go home. Bless our nation. Bless our leaders, God. Let them make the right decision in defense for your people. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for blessing that we receive. Sometimes we don't deserve, but thank you. Thank you for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you. Lord, we know you've been so good when we didn't deserve it, but we want to say thank you for all that you've done and what you're going to do. Bless our shepherd you place here in St. Paul. Anoint her fresh with your Holy Spirit to feed in God as she go forth, God. And we thank you this morning. Bless each and every one here today, those who are watching on Zoom. Cover them with your love. And all these blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hymn number 69. Decalogue summary. Hear what Christ our Savior say. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, Lord. and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. and glory honor and power unto the Lord our God for the Lord our God is mighty yes the Lord our God he's omnipotent the Lord our God he is wonderful mm -hmm. holy holy hallelujah salvation and glory honor and power unto the Lord our God for the Lord our God he's mighty yes the Lord our God he's omnipotent the Lord our God he Hallelujah. 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 Salvation.
Indeed, God yeah. is wonderful. What a wonderful God that we serve. Continues to look beyond our shortcomings and blesses us anyhow. Heals our body. Ministers to our brokenness. Make a way when man says there is no way. What a wonderful God. An almighty God. One that is king of kings. And Lord of lords. He indeed is great. And greatly to be praised. The Lord, our God, he is wonderful. And the people of God say amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together for the ministry of music, our ushers, our media team. And I just want to say thank you, Team St. Paul, just for being you. I believe that God has me in a series and me not even being aware. <laughs> Last week we talked about persistent praise. And I'm being led to a very familiar passage of scripture. And when Sister Bellamy was singing afterwards, I looked at Tabitha and said, that was God. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 6, very familiar to most. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. It says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself that even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Well, beloved, last week we spoke about persistent praise. Uh, today is persistent prayer. Persistent prayer. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Once again, God, I stand behind this sacred desk. Realizing, God, that without you I am nothing. And that I need a special touch. I need an anointing. Come, Holy Ghost, come with your quickening power that makes preaching and teaching easy. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said, Amen. Amen. Beloved, persistent prayer. As we dawn upon another Black History Month, I encourage us to be intentional uh, to celebrate our achievements, big and small, 365 days a year. For life for many ain't been no crystal stair. 
You see, the rules of the game, they are constantly changing and the odds are not stacked in our favor. But beloved, despite all that, there is victory uh, inside of you. I need somebody to pat yourself on the chest and declare there is victory uh, in me. In this season. There is an elect few that needs to cry out to God, whatever it takes, Lord, because we have a tendency to cower down at the word no. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, don't stop at the first no or even the what second no, perhaps even the what tenth no, because the word no is designed to break your spirit, to silence your voice, and to weaken your resolve. But the devil is a liar. Many of us need to summon the spirit of our ancestors. We need to pray and learn how to persevere. Segregation, separate, but not equal. Intimidation, treacherous water from fire hoses, the bombings and the lynchings, last hired first fire. Voter suppression, mass incarceration is the new Jim Crow. Taxation without what? Representation. But Jesus said that we need to always pray and what not give up. Persistent prayer. But, but what do we do when we are judged by the color of our skin and not the content of our character? What do we do when we've named it and we've claimed it and we've fasted and we have prayed? What do we do when we've gathered all of the data, huh? We've uh, analyzed all of the options because we're in the information age. And after we've made a decision to move ahead, that's when everything starts to fall apart. What, beloved? What do we do when we believe we are doing what God is calling us to do and we feel like we are carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders? What do we do when one door is closed after another? And we cry out, enough is enough. Can I tell you what Jesus says? He says, what to always Pray and not give up. You'll get it in a minute. You see, beloved, we are a people of hope. And down through the years, it has always been hope that encouraged us to stay in the struggle another day. We have hope because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt. In other words, in our nor a nor that God is still in control and that God is going to move and that God is going to bless and that God is going to make a way even when there is no way. In other words, I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know when he and he's going to fix it. I only know that God is going to make a way for me. I know he's going to do it. Can somebody shout victory? Yeah. Beloved, there is victory. Come on in me. So today's scripture lesson is a parable. A simple story that illustrates a biblical truth. And the lesson of the persistent widow and unjust judge I've shared before, but it's summed up in the first verse of Luke 18. Number one, we should what? Always pray. And number two, what? Not give up. You see, Jesus, uh, what he's doing, he is affirming uh, that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, come on, y'all, is still a valid much. Uh, that there's prayer, uh, and where there's prayer, uh, there's still great power. Uh, and you need to know uh, that prayer, beloved, uh, it really does work. Amen. Because persistent prayer 
It's not a sign, Brother Anthony, of little faith. But persistent prayer is a sign of what? Persistent faith. Now, the danger is, is that too many of us, we get discouraged and what we quit praying. We quit praying because God is not moving in the timetable that you feel that he should move. Or you quit praying because you don't see a change. You quit praying because we live in a microwave generation. In other words, God got to move and answer your prayer in 90 seconds or less. But can I tell you what Jesus' advice is? That we should always pray. Why? Because prayer what still changes things. Well, beloved, it's the second lesson in the parable that we're going to focus on this morning. In King James Version, it says, don't faint. Don't what? Lose heart. Don't become weary. In other words, don't give up. You see, this story is much more than about a woman whose husband has died. Yes, she's a widow, but she has been dealt some type of injustice. So she goes to court. And unfortunately, uh, Reverend Higgins, uh, she gets this judge who admitted in verse 4 that he does not care about God. He does not really care about what people think about him either. Oh, come on. Does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, the judge... The judge was concerned with himself and his own opinions. In other words, this judge was preoccupied with his own social biases and his own worldview. Do you have the picture now? That this judge was probably arrogant, unjust, a powerful man facing down one of the weakest uh, marginalized members of society in that day, a widow. But can I tell you uh, that this sister girl, uh, she had a strategy uh, and she had some determination. Come on, church. Uh, It's not the size of the dog in the fight, uh, but the size of the fight. Come on, y'all, in the dog. This sister, she might have been a widow. She may have been perceived to be weak and powerless and downtrodden and grief stricken and alone and unprotected. But can I tell you that that our perception of her is definitely not her reality of herself. So what am I trying to say? Stop allowing folk perception about you. Define you. You need to know that greater that is he that is what in you than he that is what in the world. So the widow, she possesses a big fight on the inside of her. And she was not willing to give up. The young folks would say some years ago that she was a what a ride or die chick. So she kept on going. She kept on going because, hey, she had to confront uh, this unjust judge. She continued to present her case. Uh, The Bible says day after day, uh, I don't know, maybe it was week after week, uh, even month after month, uh, but she kept on going until she wore him out. Uh, But this is where some of us would have messed up the first time. Somebody tell us no. Turns us away. You know, look at us funny. Like what you doing up in here anyway. Oh, that ain't hit you yet. The first time somebody reject your application. Deny your loan. Or tell you that it cannot be be done. Can I tell you what happened? We have a tendency, what, to become unglued. We start, what, saying a few ugly words. We start murmuring uh, under our breath. We know how to roll our eyes in our neck and snap at the same time. But guess what you're doing? You're giving up. 
You're quitting. You're calling in the day. You're throwing in the towel. You're having a pity party. But for this widow, quitting was never an option. The Bible. The Bible doesn't say that she had an attorney. Doesn't say she had a mediator. But what the Bible does suggest is that she was not in prison in the role that society had assigned her and neither should we. You missed that. In other words, you are not defined by the color of your skin. You still don't have it. The Mississippi Mass Choir said, God made me. That God made me what? Who I am. That I'm a conqueror. And I'm victorious, and I won't be stopped. I won't be stopped that I'm a believer, and I'm an achiever. I won't be blocked because God made me. God made me who I am. So when society says that you can't, with God you need to say what? That I can. Hey. She did not take no for an answer. But day after day, she kept pleading her case. She kept saying, grant me justice, grant me justice, grant me justice. And it got to the point where the judge said, what, enough. That even though I don't fear God, in other words, I don't even care about people. I will help this widow because she keeps on bothering me, uh, nagging me, uh, getting on my nerves. uh, And if I don't help her, uh, she's going to what? Wear me out. The verdict in her favor was not immediate. But the widow, she stayed in the struggle. She stayed in the fight because she was confident that her change, come on beloved, would come. Are you stuck this morning? And I can't, and I ain't. Are you disallowing God to be God because it's not going the way that you want it to go? That it's not happening in your time? That it's not happening on your dime? Therefore, are you standing still, immobilized? In other words, because of fear, you're scared not to do and scared of what God just might do through you. In other words, you just stay there and you do what? Nothing. I believe that's how come some of us are not persisting in prayer because we don't want to get that close to God because you can't continuously pray and seek his face and not be in relationship. You want to do all the talking, but you do not want to hear what thus says the Lord because you are afraid of what God is going to call you to do. But you need to understand that if God call you to it, that he will what? See you through it. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you got to shake yourself from the dust. You got to rise up. Come on, oh captive Jerusalem. Oh captive Agnes. Oh captive St. Paul. You got to loose yourself from the chains around your neck and persist in prayer. Because greater works than these. Come on. They, they, they didn't get it, Sister Adrian. Greater works than these shall you do. I, I read something that said you will never reach success. Because after you've reached one success, you shouldn't stop there and become complacent. You should continue to allow God to challenge you, to to, to enlarge in your territory because you're blessed to be a blessing. So get this in your spirit. Greater works than these shall you do no matter what you're doing right now. You see, God put on flesh, and he walked this earth as a natural-born man. 
He who had no sin in him had the sin of the world on him. He commanded the winds and the waves, and come on church, what did they did, obey. He spoke to demons, and they did flee. He healed the sick. He unstopped deaf and ears. He opened blind eyes. He raised the dead, but he wasn't welcome in his what? Hometown. He was despised. He was rejected. He was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief. He carried his cross. He was stretched wide and he was hung high. But if I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Jesus hung his head and Jesus died. But come on, y'all, y'all know that's not how the what? The story ends. Because three days later, Jesus was what? He rose again. Beloved, this is what persistent prayer is all about. Destroy this temple. And in what? Three days, I will what? Raise it up again. That's persistent prayer. That if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says what well, you will be saved. That is what persistent prayer that if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean us what from all unrighteousness. Beloved, that's what persistent prayer in my prayers this this morning that I just can't give up now that I've come too far from where I was started from because nobody told me that the road would be easy but I don't believe I refuse to believe I'm going to walk in faith and not by sight I just believe that he didn't bring me this far to leave me Beloved, persistent prayer. Persistent praise. But we need persistent prayer. Because I just can't give up now. I don't. One more time. Somebody under the sound of my voice. Perhaps your soul is weary because you don't believe that God is moving in your direction. But beloved, don't be weary and well doing. 
Beloved, continue to call on the name of the Lord. Continue, beloved, to persist in prayer. God has a way of giving us peace, even in the midst of the storm. That God can calm, come on, the waves. That God can move in your direction. But, beloved, you need to persist in calling his name and asking for God's will to be done in your life. So, beloved, this is the time in which we open the door of the church. And that door is none other than Jesus the Christ. We are extending an invitation for you to invite Jesus into your heart. To accept him as your personal savior. Can I tell you how much the Lord loves you? He is sitting on the right hand of God the Father. And he is interceding on your behalf. Can I tell you just how much the Holy Ghost stand in the gap for you? Because even when I don't know what to say, I am assured that the Holy Ghost is praying with moanings and groanings. And it does not matter if I don't understand it. Because I know that it's working out for my good. Beloved, we got to persist in prayer. So, beloved, if you desire to pray the prayer of salvation, we're asking you to reach out to us. Come on, the door is open. Come on, get somebody in your spirit that you know needs to be in right relationship. Come on, pick up the phone, call us, 334-286-8577. Perhaps there's one that's looking for a church home. We extend St. Paul to you. We welcome you here with open arms because we are excited what God is doing in the life of the church. Come on, pray, church, pray. Let us persist in prayer. Amen. If I never try, God said amen, amen, and amen. Beloved, I ask you to remain standing. We know that it is first Sunday, amen. We're going to do our ministry of giving appeal, but I would ask you at the time that you come to receive your communion, amen, that is when you give your sacrificial offering, amen. We're going to do it in this fashion when we arrive at that moment. We will start with my right, amen, to your left, starting from the rear, and then we'll go to my left, your right, amen, when the time comes, amen. Beloved, let us read our giving verse together. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, for those who would like to give electronically, 
We do support Gildify, PayPal, and Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign S-T-P-A-U-L-M-G-M. You can mail it in 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111, or we have a locked mailbox, amen, behind the church. If you still want to give electronically and your bank supports Zelle, we encourage you to use Zelle because it does not, amen, incur a fee. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your benevolent giving. And we pray God will multiply the seeds that's being sown in this season. God, you know what is needed by each individual and as well as corporately. So, God, we ask you to multiply the seed back, some tenfold, some a hundredfold, some a thousandfold. But however you desire to bless us, God, we're going to exalt and magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name I do pray, and the people of God said amen. amen. Beloved, we will have the announcements at this time. Good morning, St. Paul. My name is Brittany Marchin, and these are our church announcements. On Sunday, February the 12th, Team St. Paul will be celebrating the AME Churches, Founders Day, and Ch Good morning, St. Paul. My name is Brittany Martin, and these are our church announcements. On Sunday, February the 12th, Team St. Paul will be celebrating the AME Churches, Founders Day, and Chaplain Tara Dixon of Maxwell Air Force Base is our guest speaker. Please wear African attire that Sunday and be prayerful about giving your Founders Day assessment. Friendly reminder, end of the year giving statements are available for pickup in the office. If you would like your statement emailed, please contact the office Monday through Wednesday from 10 a.m. Thanks to Coach Jackson and the Alabama State University Hornets basketball team for hosting the Faith and Family Day. It was a fun time had by all. On Saturday, February the 18th, Pastor Lovell will be giving the invitation at the Honda Battle of the Bands held at Alabama State University Stadium. Bands performing are Savannah State University, Langston University, Virginia State University, Morgan State University, Texas Southern University, and the Alabama State University. More information is forthcoming. Valentine's Cake Party for adults and college students will be held on February the 16th at 7 p.m. at 2211, the ultimate play zone. Love is in the air, so let's cake, educate, test, and prep. Adults will be $10, and college students with ID will be $5. This is a She Looks Like Me event, sponsored by the Health Ministry. The health ministry also invites you to know your status. Free HIV testing is every first Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And free blood pressure and glucose checks will be every third Sunday immediately after worship. On Saturday, February the 12th, the Alabama River Region's Rocky Deep will be collecting monetary donations for the Super Bowl of Karen campaign immediately after worship. Please support and encourage our young people. Calling our brothers to join a special 6 a.m. prayer call every Wednesday, a time set aside for brothers to pray and fast together. Please contact Brother Ron Smith for more information. Montgomery Housing Authority in West Montgomery. 
Fellowship and City Council on Andre Brown, Alabama Extension, St. Paul AME Church, and Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Ministry leaders, if you have announcements, please contact Brother Dwight Martin seven to ten days prior to the event. Lastly, please keep our signal shut in and our church family in your prayers. And feel free to join our 12 noon prayer call. Have a great day, have a great week, and please govern yourselves accordingly. And the people of God said amen. Just a few things I want to bring to your attention. I do know that earlier in June that we did mail out contribution statements, emailed them out, and perhaps, you know, taxes was not on your mind at that time. So if you have not received your statement, we're asking you to call the office. If you prefer them to be mailed, just leave a message, amen. Or if you just want to pick them up, if you don't want them to be emailed, we do have them available. Just let us know, amen. I ask you to keep in prayer, Sister Jackie Jones and family. They did funeralize her cousin on yesterday. And my understanding that this cousin was more like a brother amen to Jackie's mom so let's just lift them up in prayer and on this coming Tuesday at 6 30 p.m. we will have a steward board meeting and that information we will be emailed out amen let us prepare for holy communion Will everybody please stand? You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to my almighty God. You may be seated. Let us recite the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought word and deed 
against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, hear us, O oh merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed beloved he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, likewise after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink, drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Christ's body broken for me. I eat and I'm grateful. Christ's blood shed for me. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood. I drink and I'm grateful.
Beloved, the table is open. I'm going to ask those on my right, starting from the rear, to draw near in faith. And if you have your offering, if you would please, amen. Deposit in the basket at that time.
my brothers and my sisters assuming that everyone has been served who had a desire to be served we're asking you at this time to draw near to draw near in faith Beloved, draw near, draw near, draw near in faith. Beloved, let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I was telling the stewardess this is a good problem to have. I mean that people were coming to church. Amen. And so we give God the glory for your presence. Amen. But the word of God said that after they had broken bread and ate and passed the cup, that they fellowshiped. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, we know that we're still in the midst of the pandemic. So you can do a holy wave, amen. Or you can do a little fist bump, but let's just fellowship, even if it's at a distance. However you feel safe, let's fellowship, amen. What a fellowship, what a joy that I need on the everlasting.
Hallelujah. Amen. I believe we can take a few minutes and affirm our faith. Amen. Amen. Well, I was trying to see if they was going to put it on the screen, but I know some of these good AMEs know it by heart. Amen. Maker of heaven and earth, and is Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was put on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is sitting by the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. And I apologize to the media team. Amen. Y'all know I love y'all. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all Beloved, in this season, have persistent praise, but also have persistent prayer. Persistent praise and persistent prayer. Persistent praise and persistent prayer. Now, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace, his peace that surpasses all understanding. In this season, may he guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore, in the people of God, song. I want y'all to have a wonderful week in the Lord, but leave here knowing that the blood still works. Come on, y'all. The blood still works. Yes, it does. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. The blood